Okay, welcome to the first installment of the Shelters Are podcast. My name is Jordan Canlish and I'm the founder of State Shifters and I've got alongside me Jeffrey Eisen who receives the messages from Shelters Are who hopefully you guys have had a taste for now and I'm going to spend some time with Jeffrey to give you guys an understanding of what to expect from the Shelters Are podcast. So a little bit about me first of all. Uh, I've been working with with Jeffrey directly now for for a couple of months and he's really been helping me get a better understanding of of how to deliver my message to the world through my content, which is State Shifters. And in this version of this context of this podcast that I'm hosting, the purpose is really about for you guys to understand Jeffrey a little bit more and the purpose of the Shelter Side messages. And each week we're going to be releasing a new video which will be the latest channeling around a theme. It will be on social media. You can access the video on YouTube and it will be released every Tuesday. And then on the Friday, you're going to get access to the podcast, which is going to explain the channeling from the video. So the video, we're going to break it down, digest the content and help you guys apply the messages to your, to your lives. So we're going to create action-oriented advice through the podcast, through Jeffrey's wisdom and it's going to be highly, highly valuable. So, Jeffrey, welcome to the first installment of the Shelter Sub Podcast. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you so much for uh, for helping me bring the messages of Shelter Czar to the to the world. Um, I'm really excited, and as I hear you explain um, our process and how we're going to share these these uh, messages and this wisdom, it really gets me excited uh, because I have been uh, channeling Shelter Czar. Uh, for about uh, 10 or 12 years now, and the wisdom that has come through me has changed my life. And I have shared it with others, and it's changed their life. And, and it's through people like you that have encouraged me to, to get it out into the world and share it with a wider audience. Uh, and I'm excited to do that. Uh, and of course, a little bit nervous, but you're making it easy for me by by handling uh, this podcast and 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 the social media and all of that kind of stuff. So I, I thank you for that, and I am really excited for you, the listeners, to uh, get an opportunity to understand this wisdom so that it can make your life a little bit easier, a little bit more enjoyable, a little bit more tranquil. Um, shelters are is divine messages for challenging times. And there's no doubt in my mind we are in the midst of challenging times. Yeah, the first time I got a taste for Shelter Star, it really resonated with me on a deeper level. And I guess that's why I'm here helping to share these messages because it's it's impacting my life uh, right now. Uh, as I navigate through life, these messages are touching me deeply and helping me navigate through the challenging times like you said so yeah, I'm, I'm super excited to, to be able to share this with people and for people who are just discovering the world of channeling and, and shelters are do you want to give people a bit of a background of what channeling is and how you started receiving these messages i'd be pleased to do so um channeling from my understanding is uh um messages, conversations, uh, anything that comes from the invisible world. Uh, I, I believe very strongly in a higher power, and I was always fascinated with people that could connect to that higher power. Uh, many people understand uh, mediums and psychics, and, and uh, I always thought it was kind of neat. Uh, you know, at one time I thought it was maybe parlor tricks and, mm-hmm. and then came to realize the seriousness uh, of this. Um, and so in my spiritual uh, learning, I, re- I, I learned a bit more about the invisible world, how it works and how it communicates with us. I will say though that how I tapped into Shelter Czar and how I began to channel was more serendipitous. It wasn't about, uh, I want to do this, I want to become a channel, uh, I'm going to go on YouTube, I'm going to go on the internet and find the how-to process. Um, that's not how it happened for me. Uh, a little bit about myself, I'm 66 years old, and when I was uh, 50, after working over 30 years in the family business, 
uh, building our um, steel distribution and fabrication business up uh, from from fairly uh, meager beginnings up to uh, a multi-million dollar company, uh, I, I realized that something was missing in my life. I had accomplished an awful lot. Uh, I was extremely driven. I was extremely stressed out. Uh, I was extremely financially successful. I had a wonderful family. But there was something inside of me that began... Um, it began, I guess, as a little bit of a, of a questioning, a little bit of a wondering, and that's there has to be more to life. Uh, at, at that stage in my life, I wasn't even sure I believed in God or a higher power. Uh, I thought that you had the number of years that you had to make your mark, to create your legacy, and uh, that was it. When it was over, you were gone. Um, and so this, this tingling inside of me said there might be more to life. And I began to read a few books, and uh, I read more books, and hired a coach, and went to workshops, and spent uh, a good couple of years really digging into the the world of self empowerment and self help, and and spirituality, which was which was really fascinating, and came to strongly believe in this higher power. Uh, my first coach. Uh, taught me as one of the techniques to um, work through some of the baggage and emotional uh, um, stuff that was was inside of me. Uh, taught me uh, the art of um, of uh, core journaling or automatic writing, which was just to uh, to sit and and dump everything that's inside of you on a, on a piece of paper. He was a firm believer in in the ritual of something he called the holy hour and insisted I get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and meditate and sit in silence and and begin my journaling practice. And I did that for a long time, months, maybe even years. And it really worked because I was able to dump a lot of the emotional uh, baggage I had and work through a lot of it. Um, And and after, uh, I, I guess... I, I did a house cleaning job uh, um, uh, of of what was inside of me. I continued the practice because it was enjoyable. I really liked that that morning ritual, and I found myself uh, in my in my journaling um, experience that I would ask questions because I got to the point of of you know I, I fixed a lot of the issues within myself, and then I started to ask questions about about my life and life in general. And I would just keep writing and writing and writing. And when I was finished, I would just sit and reflect on the experience. And it was like, wow, that was kind of neat. It felt really different. It didn't feel like I was writing normally. I would um, uh, read it to my wife, uh, Lois, and, and she would look at me and say, where did that come from? And it's like, I don't know. And that was the beginning of realizing that I was... Um, communicating with something that was outside of me, something bigger than me. And I didn't know what it was, uh, but I kept doing it. And, um, and it was in my, my, my journals, and I would find myself leafing through those journals on occasion, rereading some of what I felt were the more powerful messages. And it was like, wow, this stuff is really neat. And the more I would read it, the more I would realize that, that this wisdom could help me. Um, it, it came through in a very vague way and, and not in a, in a, in a process or, or uh, manual uh, uh, procedure way. But as I thought about it and reflected on it, uh, it, it, became to change, it began to change some of the habits in my life. And it was like, wow, this is, this is amazing. I'll stop for a moment and, and explain what I believe channeling is. Uh, channeling is tapping into that universal mind, the the higher power, and how we do so is in a sensory way. And so um, I, I often teach the people I work with that that the first step in, in that channeling is what I would call the sensory download. There are four main pathways that people uh, get uh, messages from the invisible world. There's the clear audience the clairvoyant, the clairsentient, and the claircognizant. People that get their messages from some auditory, sensory way, uh, some visual way, some feeling way, and some knowing way. 
most people have one of those areas that are stronger than others. And um, um, in my case, claircognizant or clear knowing is, is my way. So I would get some sense of, of knowingness uh, that would be coming from this higher power. I would then translate and transcribe it. And that's me putting words on a page. So when you uh, read or listen to the messages of Shaltazar, that is my best attempt to translate this knowingness that comes through me into words. And the final step is the interpretation, and that's what can take uh, a, a lot of time, and, and it is very much an art. And that's one of the reasons that uh, I'm working with Jordan on these podcasts and on this program of getting uh, Shaltazar out into the world, because these messages need further explanation. They need further interpretation. And we need to be able to put them more in a, in a practical sense. It took me a number of years to uh, finally ask who I was communicating with. Uh, and the name Shaltazar came. Before that, uh, what came through was the Gavish Baninu, which I am led to believe is the giver or teacher of all that is good. Uh, and then after Gavish Baninu, the name Shaltazar came. And a while later, uh, the number 33 came. Uh, the, and I believe I was tapping into uh, what, I, what I would consider the energy of 33, which is a master number, the master teacher. Hmm. Yeah, and I, I really like the, the subheading of Shaltazar, which is Divine Messages for chal- Challenging Times. How did you come about that, that kind of subheading? I realized that the messages uh, from Shaltazar were bringing me advice in how to handle uh, some of the challenges that I faced. Even though I went on my journey of self-discovery, even though I've done a lot of work and done a lot of reading, I realized that the duality that we live in uh, brings us challenging times. And I found that the messages from Shaltazar were like an oasis that I could go back to that would help me get through the challenging times. Even to this day when I'm faced with a challenge, I hear uh, in in my mind's eye, I hear in my consciousness some words uh, uh, that were from the Shaltazar messages that that helped me get through that, that helped me uh, get back on the straight and narrow. And and, um, as uh, you and I will be talking in, in further podcasts, um, we will start talking about some of the um, strong messages that Shaltazar is bringing forth about these times. And they are telling me that we are in the period of great potential for change, where change is not an option. And in order for that to happen, the energy of our planet is being stirred up, and these challenging times are intensifying. And so they are offering us this solace, this, this wisdom that help us get through these challenging times. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, a few months ago, I, I, I communicated to Shaltazar my frustration that, that these messages weren't helping enough, that, that they are um, um, somewhat vague and, they're, and they, they told me that they are called master teachings and that it's up to us to uh, dissect these master teachings and, and come up with ways of applying them. And I said, please help me, what am I to do? And it came back very clearly that uh, my next assignment, so to speak, is to help dissect, interpret, and commentate uh, and, and do commentary on these messages. And they told me very distinctly that what that would be called is the Kabbalion. And so we will be talking uh, about the Kabbalion, which is uh, taking these messages and helping you understand them on a more practical level. Yeah, wonderful. I've read a little bit of the Kabbalion and it's some pretty profound wisdom in there. And I I do believe the way you articulate and and commentate some of the messages that I've, I've listened to and that you've commentated to me directly has enabled me to embody the message fully and then apply it to my life, which is why I'm excited to be able to put this stuff out there so other people can do the same. So for people who are tun- tuning into this podcast, they're listening to Shaltazar content, what type of person are they? 
the change makers, the people who are ready to embody this wisdom? They are, um, I, I believe it, it, it's for a, a range of people. It could be those that are just having difficulty with their challenging times, uh, and it can help. Um, I've had people uh, um, give me feedback that if you have trouble, if they had trouble sleeping, they would listen to Sheltazar messages and it would help them sleep better. Uh, there is, there's a richness in the wisdom that there are so many layers of learning that you don't even have to listen to the words. Just hearing my voice with the uh, amazing original music uh, that is in behind it is is very calming and and very relaxing. And if all you get is a, a bit of, uh, of of calm and relaxation in your busy world, then that's fine. If you are more of a seeker and you are looking to figure out the answers to your life and life in general, then it's for you. So I, I, I guess, Jordan, what I would say is it's, it's for a lot of people. Uh, try it. See if you like it. If you don't, uh, then let it go and find something else. Uh, but I, I couldn't even really begin to describe the demographic because some people I would have thought uh, would not have got it and would not have enjoyed it. And they're some of the biggest fans and love it and, and, and think it's amazing. And others, I think, oh, yeah, they're really going to understand this stuff. And they're saying, nah, it just doesn't resonate with, with me. So I would, I would suggest people have to try it. And if it resonates with you, great. And if it doesn't, um, then that's fine too. I love you anyway. <laughs> it's the energy of the message, which is what people are, are picking up on as well. The energy of the words you're communicating. You feel, yeah, you feel something afterwards, which is why I like listening to them. And I think one another question to ask is, is there an optimal way to listen to it? I mean, I listen to them before bed and in the morning before I meditate. And I've found that to be effective because it puts me in a in a mood in, in an energetic state that enables me to to get more out of my meditation and sleep better. The reason why we're now putting them on YouTube and creating literally bringing them to life in a visual format is so that people can experience it in a different way, visually and audit and, and in auditory way. Is there? Have you found that there's an optimal way to listen or get these type of messages? I have. I definitely believe that they should be experienced in a, in a sensory way. Yeah. Uh, the first iteration of getting these messages after, after combing through my journals and finding the more profound messages, I came up with sixteen of them that I thought uh, were worth sharing to the world. And uh, the first way I got them out was on a CD, a two disc CD set where uh, I recorded the message with original uh, music and those CDs are available. And, and the reason I wanted to do it in a CD is I wanted it to be an all-out sensory experience. I continued to channel and, and realize that there were too many and I didn't really have a desire to do more CDs. So uh, I created the Shaltazar website. And by all means, please, if you haven't already, check it out, www.shaltazar.com. Um, and there's a free, well, an amazing free meditation that you give away to people. And when I first listened to that, I found that to be very, very cool. Uh, yes, so Shaltazar has come up with. Free. Yes, yeah. please go to the visit the the Shaltazar website. There's a pop up window, and if you join our our mailing list, uh, where you will be kept abreast of of all of the uh, things that are happening in the Shaltazar community, because it is a community, uh, you will get this free download, which is very powerful. It's called "It Just Doesn't Matter," um, and the website at this point has about 82 videos. Uh, I have um, converted them into videos, different videos than what you're going to see uh, in, in the campaign that Jordan is working on. They're kaleidoscope videos that, that put you into a very trance-like state where you can uh, listen to the message again with original music uh, in behind. There are over 82 of those um, uh, videos uh, and there's uh, about 19 and a half hours of content. Uh, some of that channeling uh, came from my journaling uh, channelings, uh, which I continue to do. And there are uh, a bunch of them where I did live channelings. Uh, for a while, I was out in the community doing live events. 
and and those are uh, a little bit longer. Uh, the best way to listen to them is in a sensory way. If you go to the website, allow your intuition to guide which one uh, is the one you should listen to. Try to listen with your feelings, not with your mind. It, it, it's not... Uh, it's not like this podcast where I ask you to to pay attention to what Jordan and I are saying. Uh, it, it's a sensory experience. So if you find yourself drifting off, fine. Um, uh, I agree with, with Jordan. I love listening to them in the morning, and I still do listen to them because they're a great reminder for me. Um, I do find morning and evening a great time, but I will also use them in the middle of the day when I'm feeling my energy down. Uh, I'm I'm very aware and observing what happens to my energy uh, with uh, with um, uh, Shalta's our messages, either when I'm channeling them or when I'm listening to them. And I've noticed a number of times where I'm feeling a little bit down, a little bit in my head, uh, a little bit of lower and slower emotion. I'll listen to uh, a Shaltazar uh, um, uh, video, watch a video, or listen. I, I tend to like to listen more than I like to watch, um, and I will find that my energy shifts. And so please experiment uh, with these messages in ways that feel comfortable or resonate. There is no one size fits all. There is no instruction manual that it must be listened this way. Headphones are great because you get the full uh, value of the sound, uh, but play around with different ways, different times of day. This is a, th- these are empowering messages. Uh, they're not how-to messages. Some have binaural beats in the embedded into the audio, correct? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, the the wonderful, uh, talented uh, uh, Marco Frugelli that does the work for me uh, incorporates binaural beats in them. There's also an app that's going to be coming out soon. I partnered with someone, uh, a company by the name of BrainTap, where they have a proprietary binaural beat and technology that enhances it. So soon you will be able to uh, purchase the 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 Shaltazar program on the BrainTap app, and you will have it on your mobile device enhanced so that it it puts you either into an alpha or theta state. So we're going to continue to do all kinds of things to bring this wisdom to the world in a way that can help benefit each and every one of you. I'm super excited to be a part of this. It's really had a had a big impact on my life, so it's time for other people to to get to know a little bit more about shelters are. And I guess we're going to wrap things up for here for the first shelters are podcast. And I, for people who are now ready to digest more of this content, uh, I ask that you guys go to the YouTube channel and subscribe. Yeah, just search Shelters Are on YouTube. Uh, the content will also be spread across Instagram. Uh, and if you search Shelters Are on Instagram, you'll be able to find the, the Shelters Are page. Shelters Are also on Facebook. Same deal. Search Shelters Are, like the page. That way you can stay up to date with these podcasts as the videos come out. Uh, like I mentioned at the start of this episode, that we will be releasing a breakdown of the the latest channeling that's being released, so you can get the most out of the information that's coming through. And through that, you can stay up to date. Uh, as as Jeffrey mentioned, the website is www.shelterzar.com, and we'll keep you updated with with all the exciting uh, content that's about to come through uh, because Shelterzar has some divine messages that are going to help help a lot of people. So, Jeffrey, any last words before we sign off? Thank you, Jordan, for bringing this to life. Uh, if it wasn't for you and other people helping me get these messages out, uh, I don't think I would be able to to share this wisdom. I share it from my heart. Uh, it is it is it has been given to me as a gift, and it is so important that I pay it forward and gift it to the world. So. Uh, please uh, get what you can out of it. And I do hope that it helps you as much as it has helped me and so many other people. Thank you, my friend. And we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you. Thanks, guys.